Kenji did an awesome video on how he would learn data science in 2021. There's also great videos from a Krish Naik data professor. They outline all the topics that you need for data science and the steps to get there. And I highly recommend that you check them out. So why am I even making this video? Well, you see, I'm not really the kind of person that can just motivate myself to go through a series of courses, books, or videos based on sheer motivation, willpower, or even interest. I've tried in the past and I have failed miserably every single time. I get that I need to learn like programming, statistics, machine learning, and all these different topics. But what happens to me every single time is I'm like, you know, I could be doing data science. I could also be laying in bed and watching cat videos. My style is more like this video where I taught myself SQL from scratch in 11 days to get my current FANG job. I call it the minimize effort and maximize outcome method. So in this video, I'm going to stand on the shoulder of giants, aka these amazing resources that are out there already, and show you guys what exactly I would do. Focus especially on designing a system that would set me up for success in completing the very daunting task of learning data science. The topics to cover are Programming, basic stats, data visualization, exploratory data analysis, machine learning algorithms, both math and implementation, data scraping slash APIs, databases, niches like NLP and deep learning, and deployment. And here is the general framework I would use. One, learn just enough. Two, do a project. And three, iterate. And the most important one, accountability. As much of it and whenever and wherever possible. All right, you guys can go now. No, just kidding. I think you should stay because I'm going to go through how to implement this framework to cover all of these data science topics step by step. I'll also show you guys how I would choose projects. Finally, stay until the very end of this video because I'm also going to tell you guys my top choice resources and how to use them. I recommend starting off with programming. Python, because it's the most intuitive, multifunctional, and has the best packages for machine learning. Programming is the most important thing to learn because it gives you the toolkit to, well, do anything. And here's what to learn about Python. Remember, learn just enough. In general Python, that's variable declaration, loops, and what OOP is. For data science specifically, you should also learn two packages, NumPy and Pandas. I would just understand how NumPy works and then focus on Pandas since NumPy, or maybe it's NumPy. NumPy is the basis for Pandas. Then you need to know some stats. Nothing crazy here. We're talking like stats 101, like the first half of stats 101. I mean like mean, median, mode, variance, standard deviation, correlation, and distribution. Realistically, if you've gone through high school math, you have way more than enough already. Next up is visualization. I prefer Seaborn because I think it's the easiest and fastest to get a pretty decent looking graph. It's built on Matplotlib, but I wouldn't bother digging into that until later. If you know pandas, it would take you like one minute to generate your first Seaborn graph. EDA, Exploratory Data Analysis. This is exploring a data set. Are there missing data? How many variables are there? How many rows do you have? Are there categorical variables, continuous variables? What's the distribution of each variable? This is a combination of everything you've learned up to now. Python, stats, and visualizations. At this point, you have all the minimum skills you need to begin your first proper project. And this is where personally I would start my first project if I were doing it from scratch. But for those of you that want to get your hands dirty with ML so you can do your first proper ML project or you're a little bit more advanced, let me also cover that quickly. There's 10 to 20 common ML algos and one way that people divide them is into supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. This is just one way of dividing. There's actually several ways out there. I recommend starting with theory or math and then the implementation the very minimum of math. I think people get really scared when it comes to math, myself included. The reason why I say theory slash math is because you don't have to know the exact math behind it. I just mean that you need to know how the algorithm works. Like for example, k nearest neighbors is finding the distance between a data point and all the examples in the data, selecting the specified number of examples, k, closest to the data point, and then voting for the most frequent label in the case of classifications, or the averages, of the labels in the case of regression. Then implementation. Theoretically, implementation is simple. Just a couple lines of code, but in practice, there's actually a lot of nuance here. Your exploratory data analysis feeds directly into how you wrangle and transform data and which ML algorithm you ultimately choose to solve your specific problem. This is why it's very important you should understand how each of the algorithms work first. 
Okay, so you're now ready to do your first ML project. My goal would be around 20 to 30 hours to get to this point, starting from scratch. And you know, that doesn't sound like a lot, right? But that's because you always have to fight off the temptation of diving too deep into each of the four areas I just listed earlier. Remember, learn the minimum and then do the project. Your covering of the basics is just the very beginning of the learning process. Your real learning starts when you start the project because doing project is the absolute best way to learn. For those of you that are curious as to why projects are the best way to learn, it's because one, there's a lot of studies that show practicing something yourself or aka doing projects is the best way of getting knowledge and skills into your head so you learn faster, more deeply and retain longer. This is because you're engaging more parts of your brain than just sitting there and passively consuming information. Two, learning as a process is never ending and oftentimes feels overwhelming because there's just way too much to learn. Projects are how you scope it down to a manageable chunk and cement your knowledge. It makes what you learn concrete and you get a great sense of accomplishment and completion when you finish a project. And three, it's how you keep yourself excited and motivated. The idea of actually doing your own project on what you're interested in should be super exciting. And I hope it is. All right, hopefully I'm convinced you of the paradigm. Learn the minimum amount and do the project. And the third part of the framework is to iterate, iterate, iterate. Dive deeper into each step of programming, stats, visualization, EDA, and machine learning. Then add in other topics. Data scraping such APIs for getting your data sets once you graduate from using pre-made data sets. Databases for storing data. Deployment of your ML models. Then start exploring niches like NLP and deep learning and computer vision. There's so many more out there. I'm not going to go into detail and cover all of these because this video would be way too long. And there are many, many resources that cover these very well. Keep watching for my recommendations. Before we move on, I wanted to also address the last and most important part of the framework accountability. This is the key to you actually doing anything. You know, sometimes you watch a video like this one that tells you exactly what you need to learn and you're like, ah, oh, yes, makes sense. I'm totally going to do it. I'm like super motivated. And then two weeks later. In school, you usually get stuff done because if you don't, there are consequences. You don't do well or fail or get kicked out of school. Well, since we're doing this by ourselves, you got to create those consequences for yourself. Learning data science is hard, and to set yourself up for success, you have to try to incorporate accountability in every way possible, so you don't just give up. For me, just deciding that I'm going to do something is definitely not enough. In fact, if I go and tell somebody that I'm going to go do a project or something, it's still not enough for me. I guess like disappointing one person is not enough for me. So you see, what I have to do is I have to tell lots of people and potentially disappoint all of them. My most recent example of this is if you guys watch my first vlog, I said I would be doing my first NLP project. So yes, I definitely want to share my day-to-day -day life with you guys, but another really big reason is to hold myself accountable. I very deliberately stuck that in there very prominently that I was doing an NLP project because I know otherwise I would find lots of reasons to give up when things get hard. See, the fear of disappointing you guys got me through it and I did it. I don't think you have to go and create your own YouTube channel, although I obviously think that's a great idea. You can also post on LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever other forms of social media. Communities are also great. Kenji is starting up 66 Days of Data again in 2021, and that is a perfect place to keep you accountable. Plus, it's a great place to chat with others who are like-minded and ask questions. All right, resources. How do we tie all of this together into a solid, concrete plan? Personally, I would actually go for a paid course, and that's not because the information is not freely available on the internet. It's more so that if I don't know something, I don't know what I don't know. So I could spend a lot of time trying to like, you know, gather the pieces of information and try to like place it in the best way possible so I can learn, you know, the most effectively. So yes, I would go find a course that covers all the topics listed above. And for each step, if the course doesn't already have a project, I would go do one myself as soon as I have the minimum amount of knowledge. I've checked out some of the most highly rated courses out there, like Python for Data Science and Machine Learning Bootcamp by Jose Portilla, Introduction to Data Science Using Python by Rakesh. I'm not going to say the name or else I'm going to butcher it. Also, thank you to one of the commenters that made me aware of 365 Data Sciences Bootcamp. I would choose any one of these courses because they all have great reviews and they all cover the topics or most of the topics that I listed above. Although for all of them, the way that they're presented is not exactly the order in which I would learn them myself. 
But realistically, I'll be using several different resources anyway since there really isn't a perfect option that would suit anyone perfectly. Something that I've learned is that you shouldn't be married to a single course and feel bad if you don't understand something that the instructor is talking about, or if you don't even finish every single part. Do whatever you have to do to learn enough so you can get started on that project. And for statistics and machine learning algorithms, whatever paid resources you may choose to buy, I cannot think of any paid resource that is better than StatQuest by Josh Starmer. I was so starstruck when I was in the same convo as him like a couple months back because he was the one that actually saved me from failing a grad school data science slash stats class, quite literally. And the way that he explains things is super intuitive and with an animations. His songs and everything else is also just like amazing. I'm like fangirling right now. I can also make an entire video on how to pick projects, but here are my best tips. If you're nervous and have a severe dread of failure like myself, I would recommend just picking a project somebody has already done and then just adding a little more to it. You can start off with the famous Titanic dataset in Kaggle and get the most popular repo and just do another distribution or try a different machine learning algorithm. Then you could try switching out one dataset for another dataset. See, little by little, you start building confidence and your projects become more self-directed as well as more complex and more awesome. On YouTube, StatQuest by Josh Starmer does full projects and so does Sendex, Krishnaik, Data Professor, and Kenji. So after I decide to commit, I would announce on social media that I'm going to be joining Ken's 66 Days of Data. Is this a foreshadowing? Maybe. And then personally, I would go make vlogs and announce projects and timelines for when I'm going to go and do them. So in this way, if I don't want to do something, I think about having to post that I'm not going to do it, or it's delayed, or something like that, and that gives me lots of fear and anxiety that I'm disappointing people and making myself look like an untrustworthy and unreliable person. So I would probably just go and do it. Wow, that is a lot. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions, and I'll be more than happy to flesh things out more. There you go. That is how I would learn data science in 2021. The minimize effort and maximize outcome way. See you guys in the next video and happy holidays to everybody.